Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a crime action film, Maniac Cop Part 2. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The film begins as the police hunt down the maniac cop named Matt. Matt is convicted of murdering innocent civilians to take revenge on the corrupt police in City Hall. His actions led to the civilians losing trust in the cops, as they fear some of the cops are also maniacs. Just then, we see police officers, Jack and Mallory, in a fast and furious fight with Matt inside an abandoned warehouse. A few moments later, Matt gets cornered so he tries to run away using the police van. However, Jack manages to ride on the police van that Matt hijacked. Jack disturbs Matt's driving, and he accidentally drives onto a pipe, impaling him. Soon after, Matt loses control and crashes the van into the river. The following night, near the river, Matt survives and takes a jump police car to continue his killing spree. At a convenience store, a man enters and robs the clerk. Fortunately, the clerk manages to press an alarm button, which notifies the police of the robbery. After a while, as the robber doesn't find any money on the cash register, he forces the clerk to scratch sweepstakes cards. Just then, after the clerk finds the winning card, Matt appears behind the robber, as he has heard the distress call from his police car earlier. The robber shoots Matt with his shotgun, but Matt isn't phased. He then knocks the robber aside and grabs the shotgun. The clerk celebrates, since he can take the winning card for himself after the robber gets arrested. However, Matt shoots the clerk with the shotgun, then he returns it to the robber as he escapes the store. Soon after, the police arrive and see the robber at the store entrance. The police shoot the robber, as he got framed by Matt for killing the clerk. The next day, we see Jack and Mallory talking to their deputy commissioner. The deputy commissioner congratulates them for taking care of the maniac cop, but Mallory insists that they aren't done, since they haven't found Matt's corpse yet. The deputy commissioner insists that the body got swept to sea, but Jack and Mallory insist the maniac cop is still alive. Just then, the deputy commissioner decides to put them under a psychiatrist's supervision because he believes that they are traumatized. After their conversation, Jack and Mallory meet with a psychiatrist officer named Susan, and they begin a therapy. They reveal to the psychiatrist that Matt is the maniac cop. In response, Susan tells them that Matt was a distinguished cop who got arrested for police brutality and died at the prison with the people he arrested. The duo tells her that Matt must have become a vengeful spirit, and he will stop at nothing to take revenge for the betrayal the police did to him. Susan is impressed by their conspiracy, but she still believes that the maniac cop is only a tall man with homicidal tendencies. Eventually, Jack decides to let this all go, and gets convinced that Matt is dead. However, Mallory gets mad, since she believes that Matt's still on the loose, planning his revenge. Later that evening, Detective McKinney incapacitates a criminal by shooting him. The other cops then arrest the criminal, and find out that their accusation of the criminal is not true. However, McKinney doesn't want the paperwork, and continues to arrest the criminal. At the station, McKinney is ordered to meet with Susan. Susan then questions him about suddenly shooting the criminal, instead of just arresting him. He says that he is proud of what he did because of his hate for criminals, and the corrupt officials that let criminals back into the streets. Susan thinks that McKinney is becoming emotionally unstable, and warns him before he leaves the room. Meanwhile, at a newsstand, Jack is having a conversation with the blind owner of the stand. At that time, Matt ominously approaches Jack with his baton and a hidden blade. Just then, as Jack reads the newspaper, he gets stabbed in the neck from behind by Matt. The stand owner hears this and tries holding Jack, but he accidentally holds Matt's hand instead. Since he couldn't do anything to help, he just screams out loud. The following moment at the morgue, McKinney and Mallory investigate Jack's corpse. McKinney then asks Mallory if anyone has a motive for killing Jack. He then asks questions that make Mallory look like a suspect, and this angers her, so she curses him. Shortly after, in another room, McKinney talks to the deputy commissioner, and McKinney is ordered to pressure Mallory to become unstable, and convince her not to make the maniac cops return a public issue. McKinney protests the commissioner's plan, and says that he would rather spend time hunting down Jack's killer. However, the commissioner gets angry at McKinney for disobeying. Susan listens in on the conversation and apologizes for the commissioner's behavior. But McKinney is not pleased with their plan to pressure Mallory. Meanwhile, at a restaurant, a man's car is being towed by a traffic cop. However, the traffic cop is suddenly killed by Matt, and the traffic cop's corpse gets towed as Matt drives the tow truck away. The man rejoices, as he no longer has to worry about his car being towed. Meanwhile, back at the newsstand, Susan interviews the stand owner about the incident of Jack's death. The owner reveals that when he touched the killer at that time, it felt dead as his hand was cold as a corpse. Susan is shocked to hear this, as she speculates that Mallory and Jack's conspiracy might turn out to be true. 
On the other side, at the car owner's house, he gets arrested as a suspect for killing the traffic cop. He then explains to the cops that the real killer is a tall cop with a scarred face. This news reaches McKinney, and he informs the commissioner and his deputy that the maniac cop's return is happening. They think that this is happening because they got the wrong guy at the warehouse back then. McKinney thinks that that guy survived and is targeting the commissioners again. The commissioners think about who the suspect might be that matches a tall guy with a scarred face. McKinney then thinks of Matt, who died in prison from getting stabbed and slashed in his face. The deputy commissioner wants to deny that statement and hides the truth from the new head commissioner. He then orders McKinney to find the killer before this goes out to the public. Meanwhile, Susan visits Mallory's apartment. She tells Mallory their conspiracy might be true, even if she finds it hard to believe. The following moment, they prepare for a trip to the news station, trying to inform the public of Matt's existence as the maniac cop. They take a cab to the news station. However, Matt is seen trailing behind them. On their way to the station, Mallory gets paranoid as she feels that someone is following them. So Susan tries to calm her down. Just then, their cab suddenly gets a flat tire, forcing the driver to replace it. While he fixes the tire, Mallory tells him to hurry up. She then notices a police car following behind them. She thinks it's mad after them, so she tries to steal the cab. The driver gets angry at her, and he suddenly gets run over by Matt as he is chasing after Mallory and Susan. During the car chase, the cab's tire breaks, which makes it easier for Matt to catch up to them. They then bump each other's car, and this leads to Mallory crashing the cab into another car. Mallory gets out of the cab and readies her gun to kill Matt. She looks around, but doesn't see Matt, not even a trace of his body scent. Suddenly, Susan sees Matt behind Mallory and warns her, but it's too late as Matt throws her into a store. After that, Matt gets Susan out of the cab and brings her to another car where he bashes her head in its window. After that, he cuffs Susan's hand to the car door, and the car moves as she hangs outside the car. After Mallory sees this, she finds a chainsaw and uses it against Matt. However, it proves ineffective to him as he blocks it with his hand and throws the chainsaw away. Soon after, he grabs Mallory by her chick neck and breaks it easily, like crushing a piece of shit. Meanwhile, Susan manages to take control of the moving car, and she crashes it just enough for her safety. Moments after, the police find Susan. As she is brought into an ambulance, McKinney asks her about the incident, and she tells him that Matt is the killer that they're looking for. Meanwhile, at the news station, we see the deputy commissioner talking about recent murders of strippers. Just then, Susan enters as a guest and suddenly informs the people about the maniac cop still being on the loose, and she reveals that it's Matt. The deputy commissioner isn't happy about her press hijack and tries to deny her statement. After the news station is done with their interview, the deputy commissioner scolds her, but Susan warns him that Matt is the exact killer, who wants revenge against the police, and that he is on Matt's kill list. On the other hand, at a strip club, a smelly bearded man named Mr. Beard watches this news after hearing of this, he continues on his time in the club. He then sees a beardless stripper and takes a liking to her beardless sexy body. After the stripper's shift ends, she heads to her apartment. Suddenly, Mr. Beard tries invading her home for her beardless body, but she calls the cops for help. Without any delay, he manages to barge his smelly beards in from her narrow apartment window. Then he is revealed to be the serial killer of beardless strippers with whom he is lovesick. But before he can strangle her, Matt arrives. Matt approaches the stripper and grabs her by her beardless chick neck. Suddenly, two cops arrive, as they got the call for help. However, they get thrown around by Matt, and Matt helps Mr. Beard escape. After helping Mr. Beard escape, Mr. Beard befriends Matt and lets him stay at his apartment for a while. At Mr. Beard's apartment, Matt rests and recalls his memories when he got framed and arrested by the corrupt past commissioner for fighting against the Mafia. In prison, he got killed by the people he arrested, as they slashed and stabbed his face to gruesome death. The next day, the stripper reports her incident to the police, and Susan and McKinney take on the case, since Matt is involved. Back at Mr. Beard's apartment, Matt leaves after his short stay, and Mr. Beard returns to the strip club later that night. There, the beardless stripper identifies Mr. Beard with his iconic beards. So McKinney and Susan arrest him instantly. Later on, at the station's holding cell, McKinney interrogates Mr. Beard. However, Mr. Beard is uncooperative and refuses to answer his question to protect his new friend Matt. Seeing that he'll not get any good leads, McKinney decides to search Mr. Beard's apartment. There he doesn't find any clues and decides to go back to the station. Meanwhile, at the police station's shooting range, Matt shoots the police officers while he is in the dark. He then proceeds to kill his way to Mr. Beard, killing the new commissioner in the process. As Matt reaches Mr. Beard and Susan, he releases the other convicts from a holding cell and helps them escape. 
The released convicts then hold Susan hostage, while they seal a prison bus and some police outfits for their escape. Matt then hands Mr. Beard paperwork to enter a prison, meaning Matt wants to free all the inmates to create an army. Some convict who doesn't want to get involved gets killed by Matt. After that, they use the bus to run away from the police as they get chased. McKinney learns of this as he gets back to the station, so he quickly chases after them. He also brings the deputy commissioner and convinces him to reopen Matt's case where he got framed and rebury his casket with full honors in order to appease Matt for their corrupt wrongdoings. Meanwhile, Mr. Beard manages to arrive at the prison after losing the cops. With the paperwork Matt provided, Mr. Beard manages to infiltrate the prison and reach the death row inmates. But before he could free them, the deputy commissioner announces over the PA system that Matt's case is reopened and that the police will atone for their wrongdoings that killed him. After Matt hears this, he abandons the plan of releasing the inmates and leaves Mr. Beard and the other convicts to themselves. Concurrently, Susan uses this chance to run away. Just then, Matt looks around the prison to find the men and killed him back then. After finding them, he starts attacking them one by one. A Molotov is thrown at him, causing him to get burned. However, that doesn't stop Matt, as he burns them alive with his flaming body. Because of that, Mr. Beard feels betrayed and starts fighting against Matt. They crash into a wall and fall on top of the prison bus, which later on explodes, burning all the smelly beards and killing both of them. After that incident, we see the police honoring Matt's achievement in the force, and they bury him with full honors. After the burial, McKinney throws Matt's badge near the casket and leaves with Susan. He then speaks of injustice and justice, being the factor of how one becomes a cop and a maniac cop. Just then, the camera slowly zooms in on Matt's casket. Suddenly, his arm breaks through the lid and grabs his badge, feeling proud of the life he lived as a righteous cop. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.